Hi, I'm Dr. Flanagan. I'm a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital in Vancouver, associated with the University of British Columbia. I'm the clinical lead for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program, Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic, and this video is going to be talking about the concept of penile rehabilitation following treatment for prostate cancer. So active treatment for localized prostate cancer may include surgery or radiation therapy. Both forms of treatment have the potential to negatively impact erectile function. And that's largely because the nerves responsible for sending the signal for achieving an erection are tightly intimate along the sides of the prostate. So whether you're exposing the prostate to radiation therapy or surgical dissection, these nerves have the potential of being injured. Therefore, nerve injury is the most common uh, initial etiology for erectile dysfunction, and this may also result in subsequent cavernosal muscle fibrosis, meaning the penile muscle that's responsible for erections can get damaged and become less elastic over time and more fibrotic. What happens is during a normal erection, this muscle has to be elastic and expand and trap the blood in. If it becomes more fibrotic, it doesn't have the ability to expand and trap that blood in. As a result, you have venous leakage of blood and as a result, you can't achieve as rigid of an erection as you could before this happened. There's also the potential for arterial compromise with some of these procedures as well, both radiation and surgery. Several studies examining the changes that happen to erectile tissue following surgery and radiation in the treatment of prostate cancer really led to the rationale for this concept of penile rehabilitation. Some of the early studies found that following prostate cancer treatment, the penile muscle, which is critical for erections, demonstrates fibrosis starting as early as two months following surgery and progresses over the subsequent 12 months. So some of this elastic smooth muscle is being replaced by collagen and fibrotic uh, changes. Subsequent studies also demonstrated that nerve injury uh, in the lab was associated with treatment results in lack of erections with subsequent lack of oxygen delivery to the muscle, upregulation of inflammatory and fibrotic molecules, and muscle fibrosis. So this penile muscle fibrosis results in the impaired ability to trap the blood uh, during the creation of an erection, as we mentioned, and this ultimately results in erectile dysfunction. Therefore, the concept was born that therapy aimed at inducing erections and encouraging oxygenated blood flow may optimize the health of this muscle and erectile tissue and perhaps result in more meaningful recovery of erectile function after treatment. The purpose of penile rehabilitation is to enhance long-term recovery of erectile function. This is through encouraging frequent and regular erections while nerves are still recovering to exercise that penile muscle just like any other muscle in the body, oxygenate the tissue with increased blood flow during these erections and reduce some of these inflammatory and fibrotic mediators. Our goal from a functional standpoint is to encourage roughly three or more erections per week following treatment to encourage that blood flow exercise of that muscle and maintaining as healthy of a penile muscle as possible. So how do we do this? What is the concept of penile rehabilitation? Well, it's uh, achieving some of these erections through any various forms of uh, treatment for erectile therapies. Now, some individuals may not need any uh, erectile aids or therapies and be able to achieve a meaningful erection following treatment but many individuals will need some. We often start with oral medications such as PDE5 inhibitors, which is the class of medication uh, of common erection medications such as Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, etc. We may introduce penile injection therapy uh, to help simulate erections, which can be quite effective. And we also may initiate vacuum therapy, which draws blood into the penis expands the muscle and exercises the muscle. As I said, for those individuals that aren't able to naturally achieve an erection following treatment, which is the majority of men, uh, we often start with uh, one of the medications 
in this PDE5 inhibitor class. So again, this includes Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, Staxin, and we consider either using daily treatment of these medications to promote that oxygenated blood flow and muscle relaxation, or on-demand dosing um, once or, or more times per week. The medication, it enhances the natural mechanism uh, to relax the penile muscle that's uh, performed when acquiring an erection. And it also increases the oxygenated blood flow into the, the penile shaft and into the muscle. The next level of intervention is penile injections. So uh, penile injection involves some combination of medications that also work to increase penile blood flow as well as smooth muscle relaxation within the penis to accommodate expansion of that muscle, trapping of the blood, and an erection. Now, the great thing about penile injections is that you don't need intact nerves to actually stimulate an erection. The medication works locally within the penis and works on the muscle within the shaft. To the contrary of the PDE5 inhibitors, the pills that we use to help erections, you need some nerve function uh, to send the signal cell to the base of the penis to achieve those erections. Now these injections can be very effective for individuals. They typically uh, start working within five to 10 minutes after an injection. And once we find the right dose, we can get a meaningful rigid erection for most men that lasts somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes. However, it does require teaching by a sexual health clinician on how to do this. Uh, it's an easy session. Uh, patients often come in for 20 to 60 minutes we go through the details of how to perform the injection and we often get the individual or the partner to perform an injection in the office setting to ensure that you're confident to go home with the injections afterwards. We often recommend for the purposes of penile rehabilitation that you perform these injections two to three times a week uh, to get routine stretching um, of the muscle during the process of, of getting an erection. Another option uh, to induce erections and exercise the muscle is vacuum therapy device. Uh, this essentially functions by drawing a negative pressure within the cylinder of the device, and this draws blood into the shaft of the penis, causing the muscle to expand both in length and in width, and, and exercise that muscle. This may be used uh, for rehabilitation, uh, but you could also use it to gain a functional erection as well. The only difference being you'd place a rubber band or a tension band uh, to the base of the penis once all the blood has been drawn into the shaft. Uh, in doing so, this would uh, create a rigid erection during the shaft of the penis and the band would keep the blood there until uh, you no longer desired the erection. So if we look at the evidence for penile rehabilitation, there's been numerous laboratory and science studies that demonstrate using the strategies for penile rehabil rehabilitation, such as use of pills, such as um, the PDE5 inhibitors, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, et cetera, help minimize muscle fibrosis and promote healthier molecular signaling. If we look at all of the clinical studies that have been reported, these include some of the randomized control trials, as well as some of the uh, prospective and retrospective uh, clinical studies that have been reported upon. If we combine all of those things into what's called a meta-analysis, it suggests that those individuals pursuing penile re rehabilitation strategies are nearly three times more likely to improve their erectile function than those individuals not pursuing these therapies. However, uh, it should be noted that there's been no definitive studies that have confirmed penile rehabilitation results in an increase in spontaneous erections. So if we take penile rehabilitation and apply it in a clinical setting, what might this look like in terms of numbers? So here uh, we have a report from Memorial Sloan Kettering from Dr. John Mulhall. And what they found is that a higher rate of erectile function recovery is observed amongst those individuals with early use of 
erection pills, PDE5 inhibitors, or penile injections uh, when they were trying to achieve at least three erections per week. This group was called the penile rehabilitation group, and they compared that to a group that didn't start any forms of erectile aids until at least six months following surgery. That was designated as the no penile rehabilitation group or conventional therapy. So when they looked at sexual function at 18 months following prostatectomy, they found that approximately 52% of men performing penile rehabilitation will have naturally occurring penetration hardness erections compared to only 19% in the conventional therapy group. 64% of individuals will have strong erections with the use of PDE5 inhibitors, so they respond to pills like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, compared to only 24% responding to these pills in the conventional therapy group. And finally, 95% of these individuals will have good strong erections responding to penile injections in the rehab group compared to 76% in the no rehab group. So in summary, what this data is saying is those individuals engaging early, using strategies of penile rehabilitation, trying to achieve erections on a regular basis from very early on following treatment, will typically have better erectile function and perhaps may respond to available therapies better than those individuals that had delayed access to uh, erectile therapies and rehabilitation. In summary, following prostate cancer treatment, we know that nerve damage may occur in multiple forms of treatment. This results in a lack of erections and associated reduction in penile oxygenation and increased penile muscle fibrosis. Penile rehabilitation is performed to promote long-term erectile function recovery and it's achieved by using an assortment of therapies to enable multiple erections per week. If you engage in the process early following treatment uh, to potentially optimize results with erectile function later. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013 and more recently the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support. If you'd like to look more into our program or connect with us, here are our contact details uh, including our uh, email website, Twitter, and Facebook programs. Thank you.